Hello, my beautiful friends, my name is Maria Khoreva and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm very excited to continue my series of must-watch ballets. So if you've missed my first video where I talk to you about dramatic and tragic love ballets, I'm going to leave the link to this one in the description box below and you're very welcome to watch it if you want to. But today we are telling... I'm telling you about the category that is not so much connected with the story or with the genre of the ballet, but it's more so about the impression that it leaves on the audience and uh, in particularly about the trick that is the, the particular trick that is in these ballets and this trick is Fuertes. 32 Fuertes, one of the most famous tricks in ballets and the quintessential trick if I can say so. So uh, Fuerte is a French term, all of the ballet terminology is in French. So Fuerte is translated from French to English uh, like something being whipped or something being whisked. So actually fuete is a turn with the whipping motion of the working leg. So you stand on one leg, you releve on one leg and the other leg is doing the whipping motion, which is helping the ballerina to turn. And uh, now in the classical ballets, usually there are 32 fuetes at the end of like the pas de dos in the middle or in the end of the ballet as like the top, the culmination of the whole ballet. So Ideally, it is performed on one spot and it is very, very effective and it makes a huge impression on the audience. So I picked the four ballets from the repertoire of the Mariinsky Theatre for must-watch, must-see ballets that have the fuetes in them. So without the further ado, let's get into the ballets themselves. And the first ballet that is, of course, worth mentioning with very, very famous fuete sequence is Don Quixote, in my opinion. So this ballet was created by Marius Petipab on the music of Ludwig Minkus in 1969 in the Mariinsky Theatre and then the version that is right now performed at the Mariinsky Theatre was made, was choreographed by Alexandru Borski based on the choreography of Petipa in 1902. So this ballet is really fiery, really energetic and has all of this Spanish mood and the fuerte is a true culmination of it. It is performed in the third act Wedding Pas de Deux by Kitri. Uh, she is the leading female character in this ballet and some of the performers do the fuertes with a fan, which is a very, very character detail in this Spanish ballet because actually Petipa created Don Quixote after visiting Spain for a long time. So he really knew his character dances, he really knew the Spanish mood and the music, it was created together I mean, Petipa was really telling Minkus what, which music to create, so it is very cohesive ballet and it's one of the um, genius um, choreographies really created by Petipa and it has all sorts of different moods from the first act with this fiery, energetic Catri and Basil variations and the pas de deux. And then the second act, we have the beautiful dream scene with the Queen of the Triads, which I was lucky enough to have performed at the Marinsky stage. And of course, the third act, pas de deux. Actually, I haven't uh, performed Kitri at the Marinsky and in Don Quixote, but I feel like um, it is really difficult actually after the first two acts, which are pretty exhausting. It is very difficult for a ballerina to perform the fuertes in the third act, but I think the Spanish mood really gives the ballerina the power to really finish the fuertes on the maximum speed and maximum energy, which is really cool. And yeah, the third act pas de deux is just uh, the way for the leading dancers to show how virtuoso they are and how technically free they can feel themselves on stage. So yeah, and the costumes and the mood is just really, you know, the Don Quixote Fuertes are one of the fastest in ballet repertoire and one of the most um, they have to be executed masterfully, which is uh, really, really cool about this ballet. The second ballet I want to tell you about is Le Corsair. 
This ballet was created in 1856 by Joseph Mazillier and the music of Adolf Adam, and then in 1863 it was re-choreographed by Marius Petipa at the Mariinsky Theatre. Right now at the Mariinsky you can see the version by Piotr Gusev, based on the choreography of Marius Petipa, and it was first performed at the Mariinsky Theatre uh, in 1987. So Corsair is a beautiful ballet and one of my favorites to dance. Even though the story of it is a little bit all over the place, it is based on the novel by George Byron, on the novel about Corsair, about Conrad, the brave Corsair with this, you know, dark and lonely soul. But the story in the ballet that you can see at the Mariinsky Theatre right now is a little bit more on the funny side, which is, I think, good for this ballet, because um, since the story is not too dark, you can see lots of beautiful dances in it and lots of beautiful pieces, legendary pieces, actually, because everyone in the ballet world knows about the trio of the odalisks and the legendary performers of it. And of course, Padesklav from the first act of Gulnara and Lankedam. And of course, of course, of course, the second act, Pas de Deux, of Medora Conrad's uh, Pas de Trois, actually, which, is, which can be performed as Pas de Deux. So I'm going to explain to you why. So in the original performance, it was a Pas de Trois of three main characters, um, Conrad, uh, Medora and Ali. And uh, Conrad and Medora are the main, like, a lovers couple in this ballet, and Ali is the slave who is doing all of sorts of different tricks and jumps and turns, so it's a very virtuoso character that is included in this part of Chua. But at different galas and at different concerts, this uh, piece, this choreographic piece, is often being performed by just Medora and Ali, and it is uh, shorter and, like, more effective that way. So yeah, this is actually the piece that is performed in the second act at the Mariinsky Ballet and it consists of uh, adagio variations and in the coda you can see the fuertes. So this part of is really effective and really beautiful and I love the music, I love the choreography in it and the female variation is really intricate and really beautiful and I love performing it. Of course, even though it's a little bit hard, but it is uh, still very, very enjoyable. So the Corsair, it is the story about the East, about the pirates, Corsairs, about the ships, about the sea. And of course it consists, uh, it has the story about slavery, but um, in my opinion, it doesn't uh, make the story worse because it's the story about the past and it's really made in a funny and uh, joyful way and it is pretty enjoyable to watch in my opinion because it has uh, a lot of moments with humor and yeah it has fuertes um, which when executed nicely are really really a uh, crucial point in the ballet and uh, make uh, the audience really appreciate the whole, the full piece. So yeah, Corsair is really a must-watch ballet for me, especially because the set and the set and the costumes are really, really beautiful and colorful. The third ballet is Swan Lake, and of course, when you talk about any ballet in general, of course, for many, 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 many people, Swan Lake is the first ballet that comes to mind because it's iconic and the music is really the epitome of the music for the classical ballet. And like, I'm pretty sure everyone knows the dance of the little swans and the main theme of the Swan Lake because it's 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 like really soulful and it's 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 genius it's the music of Piotr Tchaikovsky and it's the choreography on, of Lev Ivanov and Marius Petipa and first actually the first appearance of this ballet of this music uh, by Piotr Tchaikovsky uh, on the ballet stage was in 1877 and the choreography was by Julius Reisinger so not Petipa and not Ivanov and it was not very a very successful performance uh, and uh, people did not really like the choreography and actually people did not really like the music 
either, which is strange because the music is really gorgeous, it's literally perfect and it's literally telling the story so well. But nevertheless, the first performance was not successful. It only became successful after Tchaikovsky's death and uh, the ballet was re-choreographed by Lev Ivanov, the young and promising choreographer, and Marius Petipa, who was already nearing the end of his choreographic career at the Mariinsky, so the true master and the young promising uh, talents, they both created this ballet and really created a genius masterpiece, in my opinion. So yeah, so about the Fouetes, of course we have the second act Padita of Odile and Siegfried. So we have the main female role of uh, Odette's Odile, which is performed by one, one person, one ballerina, so two different characters in first act, second act, and then in the third act she's uh, Odette again, so she's Odette in the first and the third act, and she's Odile, the evil, um, the evil character in the second act. And we have all sorts of uh, technical tricks and technical um, choreography in the second act Padida. And I think, well, I feel that the second act Padida of Odile and Zikrit is one of the most difficult Padidas in ballet history because it is really... The adagio, the first part, is really lengthy and is really tricky to perform, in my opinion. And then we have this very difficult, very challenging variation, very challenging female solo. And then we have the, the shortest ever coda of Secret and you have the Fuertes. And I mean, really, it is a true... Whoever's performing Odette Odile, it shows if you are a true ballerina or not, in my opinion. And yeah, so the Fuertes, the Odile Fuertes are really meant to be furious and really meant to be fiery and as energetic as they can get because she's showing her true evil self. She's showing the character and the evil power. And it is a, a nice little like detail because Odette is very soft and she's doing the soft movements, the delicate choreography. She's not doing lots of very, very technical stuff on stage. And then Odile comes and she comes to seduce the prince. She comes to lure him into her evil spells, her and Rodbard's evil uh, spells. And uh, she makes this thing by doing the fuites basically and the very, very technically demanding variation. So. It is really effective to look at the Fuertes uh, being performed by Odile and then Siegfried says that uh, he loves her to death and then it makes... Um, he does this... he swears his love to Odile and then it makes Odette really really suffer and she's about to die but then in the Marinsky version of this ballet, Odette uh, leaves and uh, Siegfried kills Rodbard and Odette can leave. So it's a happy end, which I quite like in this ballet. I don't know, maybe some can uh, argue with me on this point, but for me, ballet with happy end is, uh, is the way to go. So let me know actually in the comments if you prefer the happy ending in this one lake or if you, if you prefer the... Uh, ending with Odette dying. So yeah, it's, it's, it'll be a very interesting discussion in the comments, but that's about that, uh, about Swan Lake, basically all I wanted to say. And last but not least, for today we have Paquita. The ballet again with the Spanish story and the grand part from, the, from this ballet premiered in 1881 with the choreography by Petipa. And then for a very long time, only the grandpa from this ballet existed. It, is, it was only the one part that lived through all of the years uh, on stage at the Mariinsky Theater. But not long ago, uh, the choreographer Yuri Smikalov from our theater reconstructed and added the choreography to this ballet to make it a full three-act piece. So he 
we still have uh, the grandpa from the third act, we still have Padetroir, which was from the original Petipa choreography, but right now we have the third act full-length ballet with the full story, and it is much more fun to watch, in my opinion, and uh, it is with the choreography of Yuris Mikhailov, a very talented choreographer from the Mariinsky. So, Paquita is a story based on the novel of Miguel Cervantes on the novel called uh, The Little Gypsy. And it, again, the plot is all over the place. It is the, about the gypsies kidnapping the girl from the noble family. And then throughout the story of the ballet, the girl finds her parents, but then there's this uh, jail and then there's this officer that falls in love with her. We have all sorts of different things, but it doesn't really matter because, uh, I mean, it's really, really, really interesting to watch. And in my opinion, it's, it's one of the most fun ballets in the repertoire of the Mariinsky Theater. And it's definitely really fun to perform because again, it has a lot of humor, it has a lot of jokes, and it has a lot of just cheerful, joyful moments. And yeah, the fuites in this ballet are being performed at the very, very, very end of the ballet, at the very last, uh, like at last few minutes of the third act. And it is challenging for a ballerina, I, I can't tell you because I was really lucky to perform this ballet uh, a few times at the Mariinsky. But, you know, it really finishes the ballet, the fuites finish the ballet in this case. And it is a, a beautiful thing, in my opinion. So the grandpa from the third act consists of uh, many variations performed by the soloists, female soloists. And we have the male variation, we have the corps de ballet variations. And the choreography is really, really beautiful and with a lot of character moves again and with a lot of dignity. And then we have the fuites and so... Um, we also have the dance of uh, little students, little kids from the Vaganova Academy. Uh, the Mazurka performed by them, which is cute. And, you know, it is history because that is how it was created. And, yeah. So, in my opinion, Paquita, not because of the fuetes, but because of the full thing, Paquita is really a must-watch ballet. And that is it for today. I wanted to tell you guys that these ballets and this category and me just telling you about the must-watch ballets is, of course, only my personal opinion. And I'm not the 100% um, authority, of course, in this uh, question because I'm just a ballet dancer. But I've been dancing for for quite a long time now and I formed my I have formed my opinion. So I just wanted to share it with you and maybe it will be useful or like helpful for some of you. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this uh, compilation, this video. And let me know which ballet is favorite for you from these four and which fuetes are your favorite to see or maybe to do, to dance. Yeah, let me know what other category you want to see from these series and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this one and more ballet related content and i love you guys very 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 much please stay happy and healthy and i will see you in the next videos bye guys